Madam Kong. Today we are going to discuss about the boiling point and melting point of group 1, group 17 and across period 3 elements. What is melting point? Melting point is a process where solid change to liquid and boiling point is the process where liquid change to gas. Melting point and boiling point of a substance is a reflection of the strength of intermolecular forces holding the particles together. If the strength is strong, meaning that it needs higher boiling point or melting point to break down the bond. Or why for sure? So you look at group 1 alkali matter. When going down the group, what happens to the melting point and boiling point? Going down the group, melting point and boiling point decrease. Why? But for group 17 halogen, when going down the group, you check the value of the boiling point and melting point increase. Why? Both elements going down the group, but why the trend is different? For group 1, also known as alkali metals, the melting point and boiling point decrease when descending the group. This is due to the increasing of proton number, the atomic size increase. As we learned before, when going down the group, the number of shell or the principal quantum number increase and shielding effect increase. The outermost electrons are further from the nucleus. So this causes the attraction between the nucleus of the atom and the valence electron of the metallic bond weaken. As a result, the melting point and boiling point of the elements decrease down the group. But for group 17, the concept is different. Group 17 elements are also known as halogens, exit as diatomic molecule. Halogens have a simple molecular structure with strong covalent bond. So based on here, we know that the bonding of the group 1 and group 17 is different. The melting point and boiling point increase when descending the group. This is due to the proton number of the element increase which means the atomic size increased too. The number of electrons in the molecule increase and the, num and the molecule get larger. Thus, the intermolecular forces or random forces between the neighboring molecule get stronger. As a result, the melting and boiling point of the element increase down to group 17. So even though both of them proton number increase, Okay. But the type of bonding from group 1 and group 17 is different. This is matter. Group 17 is halogen or we consider as non matter. Let's check for this diagram. Lithium to silicium going down the group. So the size of the atom increase. The IE getting decreased. Why? As we explained just now. The distance between the nucleus and the valence electron of the atom further away, attraction weaker. That's why IE decrease going down the group. Thus, the melting and boiling for group 17 increase from fluorine to iodine for both boiling point and melting point due to the exit as a covalent nonpolar molecule. At the same time, halogen exit is diatom. For example, Br2. Cl2, I2, diatomic. And their valence electron is Ns2, Np5. So this allowed them to form covalent bond between atoms in order to achieve the normal gas configuration. So if you check the phase of fluorine and chlorine are gases, bromine is a liquid and iodine is a solid. Now let's discuss about the melting point and boiling point across period 3 element. The variation in melting point and boiling point of the element is caused by the changes in the structure and bonding of the element across the period 3. The variation can be discussed in three parts. First, metallic bond, which involves sodium, magnesium, aluminium. Second, giant covalent structure, which involves silicon. Third, a simple molecular structure, which involves the non-metal area, Phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon. So for the metal, the bonding is metallic bond with giant metallic structure. 
For silicon, it's covalent bond with giant covalent structure. Phosphorus sulfur chlorine, argon actually is covalent bond with simple molecular structure and the forces is Van der Waal forces. Now we look at part 1, metallic structure. Sodium, magnesium, aluminium are metal. In metal, the atoms are held together by strong metallic bond. Metallic bond is an electrostatic forces between the positive metal ion and the delocalized sea of negative valence electron. If you look at this diagram, right? So, Mg2+, plus, all the Mg2+, plus considered as the positive metal ion. And each Mg2+, plus will come together with two electrons. So, this will form a delocalized sea of negative charged valence electron. Then, the strength of the metallic bond is proportional to the number of valence electron in the metallic atom and inversely proportional to size of positive ion. If you still remember, the, still remember this will have learned. Part 2. Giant covalent structure, silicon atom. Silicon acts in the form of giant covalent molecular structure, has strong covalent bond holding the atom together in three-dimensional array. So look at this one. One silicon atom connect with another silicon atom. The bonding between them is covalent bond. So each of silicon is tetrahedral covalent bonded to four other silicon infinitely. High energy is needed to break down the strong covalent bond. So both diagrams showing the tetrahedral arrangement of atom around a central atom in silicon. Next. Part 3, simple molecular structure. Here we are going to discuss about the phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine and argon atom. All of them are nonmetals. Phosphorus, P4, sulfur, S8, chlorine, Cl2 have simple molecular structure, while argon exists as a monoatomic. The covalent bond within the molecule are very strong. So you see, chlorine, chlorine, between chlorine is covalent bond. But the Van der Waal forces of attraction between the molecule are very weak. Means chlorine molecule and chlorine molecule between them is Van der Waal forces. The Van der Waal forces of attraction increase as the molecular size increase. So this is sulfur S8. Between the sulfur atom is covalent bond. But for the S8 molecule with the another S8 molecule, they are holding by Van der Waal forces. P4 molecule, phosphorus, sulfur molecule, S8, chlorine molecule, Cl2, argon, single argon atom. So covalent bond and Van der Waal forces in covalent compound. This one, what we have explained just now. Between the atom is covalent bonding. Between the molecule is when the wall forces. S8, P4, P4, Cl2, Cl2, argon, argon. When the wall forces is proportional to molecular size. So based on here, right? The smallest molecular size is argon and then the strongest one is sulfur. So that's why the melting point and boiling point is increased from argon to sulfur. Argon followed by chlorine, phosphorus, then the highest one is sulfur. So this is the essay question to explain the melting point or boiling point across period 3. So we have to answer part by part. So part 1 is about the sodium, magnesium, aluminium are metal and they talk about their bonding, their forces and then what happened for their system means it got there, there are positively charged metal ion and the delocalized electron directly proportional to the number of valence electron inversely to the to the size okay you have to explain in details second part you have to explain about silicon which is giant covalent structure okay tetrahedral arrangement and then strong covalent bond between silicon atom so need high the highest boiling point to break down the bond if compared with metal and non-metal elements. Then the third part is about the simple molecular structure from phosphorus to argon. The type of forces is Van der Waal forces. 
Then you have to explain the strength of Van der Waals forces is depend on its molecular mass or molecular size. Higher molecular mass, stronger the Van der Waals forces between the molecule. So you have to mention the sulfur is S8 molecule, phosphorus P4, chlorine Cl2, and the argon as the monoatomic. So the increasing order of the melting point is from argon, followed by phos chlorine, phosphorus, and then the highest one is sulfur if compared among non-metal. So we can make the conclusion, periodic trend in the melting point and boiling point is depend on the type of intermolecular forces or bonding involved. So that's all for today. Don't forget to follow my IG at chemicom SL. Subscribe, like and share my YouTube channel. Hope you all learned something. Thank you.